Hello, good people, and welcome to Monday Night Sports. Uh, tonight, uh, we are going to enlighten you on matters sports in and across the globe and the world of sports. Uh, remember, tonight, it's a big night because two Kenyans made us proud. I'm talking about none other than Eliud Kipchoge. I don't know whether I should give you a sneak peek before we start it in. Of course, my name is Oranje Kusimba. I'll be your host for today and, of course, the other Mondays because when you see it's on Monday and Sunday was over there, Saturday was also there and matter spots were there, it means that I'll be here matters sports now just to tell you where you can also find us at uh, through our social media platforms of course over there twitter uh instagram and of course uh, facebook at switch tvke and remember you can get matters interactive as possible you can tell us what manu did and manu did not do you can tell us why arsenal is performing the way it's performing it's also a topic for today and of course i'll be letting you in the know in regards to that but before we start uh, on matters Arsenal and also Manchester United. Allow me to start with the local things. Eliud Kipchoge, two-time Olympic champion and uh, he's also the world record holder as it stands. And uh, with the age that he has, Eliud Kipchoge managed to finish the Tokyo Olympics one, uh, once again with uh, two hours, two minutes and 40 seconds. Two hours, zero, two minutes and 40 seconds. That was his completing time. Finished the first one. He crossed. He crossed uh, the line uh, fast over there in Tokyo. And of course, in the ladies category, Bridget Koske was also there. Remember, these two athletes. They even attracted a congratulatory message from the president Uhuru Kenyatta. Who does that? So these guys are actually making the country proud. When the president starts applauding you, when you've represented the country, remember you are doing something great in regards to that. Those are just but the pictures of what went down in Tokyo. Remember, Eliud Kipchoge was going back to Tokyo for the first time since he clinched his gold title over there in Tokyo Olympics. Now, it was just a, more or less a special homecoming for him where he clinched his first gold medal. Kudos, Eliud Kipchoge. I don't want to talk about the age because uh, I'll be putting the other athletes into test. Remember, this guy is very old and is making these kinds of milestones. So, you better be on the know. You better be a person who actually strives to be like Kipchoge. Remember him in the Ineos Challenge. He told us, no man is limited. So, human beings... You are not limited. So long as you qualify, being a human being, it means you are not limited. And still on matters athletics, allow me to bring this one in because Ferdinand Omanyala also in his first AK meetup at the Nyayo National Stadium because they were held uh, on Friday and Saturday. Eliud Kipchoge, not Eliud Kipchoge, Ferdinand Omanyala managed to finish at a speed over at a speed time of 10.00 this is uh, also i think it's also a national record at this particular time because this is the fastest man in africa now ferdinand, ferdinand manyala doing us proud again and uh, he's just starting up for this season just uh, look at what he did at the nyayo national stadium then uh, we'll be coming back and i'll talk about his milestone performance this year just look at what he did Ferdinand Omanyala, I don't know what this guy is eating. I remember I covered him when he was starting and he was so optimistic about breaking records. He just mentioned that at some particular point, he might as well be in a position to meet the best runners in the world and he was sure that he will challenge them. That's what he told me on a one-on-one -on -one interview with him back there at Huruma where he started out. He was showing uh, some, uh, he was actually showing a capability of uh, being the fastest man in Africa and also the world. And I'm also challenging him because I was also talking about this particular story with my director over there, Bobby, and also my producer, Ivy, telling them that I think I can beat Ferdinand Manyala when we run. And uh, when I beat Ferdinand Manyala, I'll actually qualify as being the fastest man in Africa. So Ferdinand Manyala, I challenge you for a one-on-one -on -one sprint over there, not a one-on-one -on -one interview. And I know I will beat you. I'm a man of my words. I know I will beat you. 
So the people need to see me being the fastest man in Africa. Oronja Kusimba over there. This is Monday Night Sports. I'm here to get you covered. And now moving on swiftly to Kenya Open Golf. Uh, Njoroge Kibugu, 18 year old. And he actually told us, and he's, he actually showed us that he can be in a position to break milestone. Following suit, Ferdinand Omanyala. Following suit, Angela Okutoi over there. Now, this one is Njoroge. And Njoroge did us proud because the Kenya Golf Open, which is a very huge tournament, uh, it actually started over there last week and it uh, attracted a lot of people here in Kenya, which was actually won yesterday by Wu Ashun, a Chinese golfer. And Wu Ashun walked away with 37 million Kenyan shillings. You guys talk about golf being a sport not for the poor people, as per they say. Golf here am to a kawaida like it. But uh, Wu Ashun walked away with 37 million. Just imagine. And also, uh, our guy over there, Njoroge, who was actually in a position to finish at position 64 overall. But of course, among Kenyan golfers, he finished at position 1. Also attracted a huge bunch of sponsorships, including even cash prizes. And uh, there are some guys who also offered him big, big lots of cash. You know, when we're speaking about golf, we mean a lot of corporates are over there. And a lot of corporates really want to invest in such kind of sports because uh, it's something that uh, it also boosts our tourism sector in Kenya and uh, we saw it Najib Balala was there the CS and uh, CS Amina was also there she was part of the golf series and it was incredible Kenya is a really good place for golf scenes and uh, one thing about golf I think I should also start playing golf because uh, it's the rich man's sports I'm not saying anything but <laughs> I'm just trying to insinuate. See your sporty am to maskini. But of course, uh, in another episode of Monday Night Sports, we'll be bringing in some golf experts just to enlighten us, just to demystify what it means playing golf. Because most of you guys think uh, that it's truly a rich man's sport. But people do play golf. Kenya Railways Club over here, people play golf over there. You can be part and members of that specific club and you can learn how to play that incredible sport. But over there, kudos to Njoroge. You did us proud as a country and you did uh, the teen world proud over there. Now, we'll be coming back uh, with lots and lots of stuff, uh, including the fun experience, which I'm going to tell you what FC Leopards fans did. Or rather, I will show you what FC Leopards fans did because FC Leopards were up against Bandari and they beat Bandari. It's a big one. So don't go anywhere. When we'll be back, we'll be tackling matters, fun experience. This is Monday Night Sports with me, Oronje Kusimba. All right, we are back on course Monday Night Sports and I'm just here to get you glued and entertain on, entertained on Matters Sports. Remember, on our last episode, uh, we talked about sports being entertainment and you are supposed to be entertained when we are talking about Matters Sports. And that is why I'm here with the fun experience zone that I witnessed this weekend because I told you that I will be part of every fun experience in and around the sporting arena. You know, you guys are fond of just seeing the highlights and just seeing the goals being scored, but you guys know little about what happens over there in the terraces. Fans are usually lit. Fans are usually enticed with the mood of the game. And FC Leopards this weekend, I mean yesterday on Sunday, were playing against Bandari, a coastal side. Remember these uh, beach boys, as per the say, were here and they were here for a force. And uh, they've been part of the KPL and they also shared a coach at some time with the FC Leopards. So for the FC Leopards fans, it was a big achievement drawing, not actually beating, drawing with Bandari 2-2. I got a chance uh, to, to actually involve myself with the FC Leopards fans. And uh, so how they were cheering, one could actually be mistaken that uh, FC Leopards won this particular encounter. No one knew that they actually shared spoils. It was 2-2 FC Leopards against Bandari. Just have a look at what FC Leopards fans were doing yesterday. <laughs> Oh, 
<laughs> I don't know why, why, why you guys are from Western, the lawyer guys, are actually the ones who are involved in all the fun experiences. The other week we were talking about the KCB versus uh, Cabras and uh, the Luya guys were also part and parcel of the fun experience. And of course uh, we are looking at now the FC Leopards guys over there being involved in a huge fun experience. Now I don't know other communities be part of the fun experience. Of course there is also another piece of fun experience because Gogo Boys which actually plays in the NSL league were playing against Buruburu. This match ended 2-1 at the Camp Toyo grounds and it was big and lit. You know one thing about NSL, NSL is very competitive and now these boys who are go, -go boys, of course I have a friend playing for that particular club. This guy is called Shikoko. This guy is very heavy but when you see him running around with the ball you can be confused. You don't know whether that weight that he holds is a weight that actually steers him to be gust and also be be running in a very in a very fast manner but just have a look at what these people did including a fan a lady who we were interviewing and she saw the other guys passing across over there who are also fans and she even forgot that we were interviewing her and she continued blowing her vuvuzela so just have a look at what went down in regards to the fun experience over there in Camp Toyo Jericho Gogo -Go Boys versus Boruburu Wonderful scenes over there. We'll be in a position to just uh, give you a sneak peek of what happened during the game because I know most of you guys did not catch a glance of that. So it's courtesy of my director Bobby was also there on the ground and uh, decided to take those amazing shots of that particular game which are just running. I'm just trying to show you the kind of players that were there. Of course, Shikoko is there, the one running over there who is, uh, who is heavily built. And, and Mark Hugh, that is a striker. And he scores a lot of goals. He's goal-oriented in some way. But now, forget about football. We now move into rugby, where we witnessed also another shocking scene. No one in the rugby fraternity knew that this was going to happen because this was a big match. KCB versus Oilers. Nakuru Oilers. And uh, now, just uh, get a glimpse of what happened in that game before we come back and I tell you about my take in regards to that game. No, no, no. Whoa, whoa, whoa. A rugby game that the results no one expected. Especially me. I actually thought that uh, KCB is going to win this encounter. And uh, the game actually ended at 24-17 in favor of men and guy Oilers. They are just trying to tell us that they are the guys who are coming to beat KCB. Remember KCB was defending their championship, was defending their title. And KCB, all the teams have, find, have, have actually been finding it difficult to beat KCB. Remember on uh, last week's match day, Cabras went short and Cabras uh, to some point did not even look like they were winning that encounter. So Cabras was just beaten hands, hands down. And now this one Menengai oil has shocked the whole country and uh, I'm free to say that it shocked the whole world because uh, Menengai 
<laughs> those young techs are actually pulling in what we call a big shift. And uh, just my take, I actually think that Menengai Oilers, Menengai Oilers are a brilliant side. And uh, their coach over there, Mr. Gibson Weru, is actually a skillful coach. And he's a coach who actually uses his mind. I'm not saying all the coaches do not use their mind. But Gibu is one interesting and intelligent coach. Uh, intelligent coach. Let me tell you one interesting fact that you guys did not pick or rather the keen guys who are actually following rugby uh, that much know about it is that Gibu decided to put in a lineup of Menengai Oilers which the crucial positions which are 9 and 10 are only the positions that kuna wababa, kuna waze. Because looking at position 9 on Somo over there, looking at position 10 Ominde who actually won the game for them he was the man of the match. I mean, they has been in the rugby scene for long. We knew him over there in Nakuru Anyore, but he came in on loan at Oilers. Now look at the player who came in on loan at Oilers, winning for them their match. Ominde was good with the boot. He also missed a chance when they met against KCB in the regular league match because Ominde decided watch forwards were bebe instead of him going for the points. But uh, he came in yesterday and he proved that uh, talent is something that he does. Now, let's just listen in to Dennis Mwanja, who was the assistant coach of KCB. Let's just hear what he said in regards to yesterday, in regards to Saturday's loss against Menengai Oilers. Now, I would say um, a knockout game could go either way. You see, even the last games, we, we were getting back from the, from the dead and winning. So, it's not a surprise if, if, uh, if, we, if we lose. But we walk away proud knowing that we set the bar so high that everyone wants to beat KCB, that's a fact. Everyone wants to beat, but everyone should get the five feet. It's not just about beating KCB, but uh, we look within ourselves and we, we always say we are competing with ourselves. The things which we, which we could have done better, uh, not taking away from Oilers, they've worked hard, like I said last time, but uh, when we look at ourselves, when we perfect ourselves, that's when we can always be above every other external, external process. <laughs> you know, there is one thing that Mwanje said, and it, it, it has actually caught my attention, is that all teams want to beat KCB. That is what Dennis Mwanje is saying. But uh, let me just uh, correct him in some way. You know, there is uh, one thing that has been broken. I think it's going to be difficult now for KCB, not unless KCB put in a crop of players who are young and energetic. I mean, KCB looking at their forwards, everyone is old over there, except the number two hooker, who is a young tech, and that was what did not go on their side because uh, looking at Oilers, they are very good in defensive and they have fast forwards, the likes of Kinashitundo over there. That guy knew him all the way, all the way from high school, St. Peter's Mumias, and uh, he actually won the game for them because he's been on top form, he's been part and parcel, he's a forward, but when you look at the top point scorers, over there, Kenya Cup, he's one of them. Now, one thing about KCB, Mwanja, I know you're saying that uh, all teams want to beat KCB, but once you've been beaten, the deadlock has been broken. Now, I think the other teams have seen that this is possible. It's something that can happen. And uh, let's just listen to what uh, Coach Gibson Weru had to say in regards to his team Oilers winning in this particular encounter. Oh, I'm extremely happy for, for the boys and for the team. Uh, I think we've worked extremely hard over the past five years. This is just a culmination of that hard work, uh, a lot of preparation which has gone into the way, a lot of planning. And, um, you know, this is, this is just one step towards uh, our goal, which is uh, to win Kenya Cup and to become a championship side. I know um, we are one game away. Uh, for us now, we'll just enjoy this victory, absorb it, and uh, we'll plan for the finals. Now, Gibu, Gibu is also a former Kenya Sevens player. Gibu played at number nine. And during his days, I think he was the only hard, light-skinned player. Now, Gibu has just mentioned that they are very happy because this is their first final ever. And remember, ever since Menengai Oilers got into the Kenya Cup competition, they've been climbing the ladder. They've never gone down. Look at their bar. This is a team that have actually been on peak. It has been performing day in, day out, day in, day out. And now this, they decided they are going into the final. And they went into the fight. They are going into the final and they will meet Cabras. 
Remember, Cabras also played their semi-finals and Cabras played against Strathmoleos over there in Kakamega and Strathmoleos fell short of uh, glory and also win because uh, the game went 29-9 in favor of Cabras. And one thing about Cabras fans before we take this short break, Cabras fans were happy because this is going to be their first final that they are not going to be with KCB. Now, I don't know whether it's going to be a flip-flop side, but it's a catch-21 situation because I don't want to be the person who picks a side between Cabras or uh, Menengai Oilers. But all I can say about this encounter is that if Cabras played the way they played KCB, Menengai Oilers could as well be our 2022-2021 Kenya Cup champions. That is what I've said because looking at Cabras, they don't have a solid backline. If it's not Kubu, if it's not Dukita over there, we are looking at a backline that Ikoshe Kipale Kimpango compared to the Menengai Oilers. And remember, Gibu is a man who uses his brains. So I think he will capitalize on what he thinks is Cabras's strong, is Cabras's loose end. So Cabras, if you're watching this show, Tighten up your bolt because it is not going to be easy. I know it's going to be a match in Kakamega and one thing about rugby is that the home team usually has a very big advantage because looking at the teams that have actually showed us in this Kenya Cup reign that they are beat there and beaten or rather they are bad when it comes to their home game. Look at most. So it's not going to be an easy encounter. Finals. We are going to confirm to you because KRU has not stated where the finals is going to be, but it is predicted that the time is going to be in Kakamega. So let's take a short commercial break and when we'll be back, we're going to talk matters English Premier League. Of course, Mike is here and gassed up, ready to tell us what he thinks about his Arsenal side. So don't go anywhere. All right, we are back on course. Remember earlier on, I told you, you can find us via our social media platform, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, Facebook at Switch TV KE. And remember, you can follow us, Pale YouTube, like, share, subscribe, comment, leave down a comment, tell us how you feel and what you feel about Monday Night Sports. And without further ado, I just want to welcome the one and only Mike Yama Pale. Yes, sir. Nasema, you, know, you, know, you know, one thing about you radio guys, Nasema yeah. So how you how has your weekend been in terms of sports? Uh, you know, I know you're an Arsenal guy. Oh yes, I mean Sado was <laughs> about the fact. Uh, I mean let me let me greet you first of all. Okay, greet you me. must feel how it feels to win. You know, I know you're not used to that feeling. So you know, you know, the same way the Bible said somewhere. The shadow of some a, a disciple passed, yeah. and then someone was well. I know now with my my hand now, <laughs> your team will start winning. So now. Manchester United, <laughs> be assured and be guaranteed that we're now going to start winning because of the handshake, <laughs> the mighty handshake between yes. me and Mika himself. Uh, yes. But let me just uh, bring your attention mm. uh, before we talk about Manchester United mm. and Manchester City, because mm. I know even without me bringing it in, mm. you mm. will talk about it. Uh, for sure. Now let's just talk about Chelsea. Mm. E club now, the way Abramovich said, um, he put out a statement of intent. He wants to sell the club, yeah? Mm. And it's it's only right because um, probably for him, he feels he doesn't want their necessary attention. You know, mm. now with Russia, a lot of things have been banned. Facebook has been banned in Russia. I mean, there's a lot of things that uh, are going, going on because of the but, invasion but, in Ukraine. But, but now let's just talk about him selling the club mm. and now looking at their performance because Chelsea has, have a, has had a very good streak mm. uh, in regards to how they've been performing yeah. on the pitch. Yeah. Now, is it going to affect the players in some way? Are we going to see now a less motivated Mendy? Are we going to see a less motiva motivated Kai Havertz? Mm -hmm. Because Chelsea, we've seen a very good players emerge. Thiago Silva. Yeah. Mm. Um, yes, they've had a good streak of late. I wouldn't be too sure about the game of Burnley. They made mm. too many mistakes. Yeah. But yeah, they've been winning games. But I do feel it will affect them. The reason Chelsea started succeeding in 2003-2002 was when Abramovich came on. Before then, who cared about Chelsea? Who gave a damn about Chelsea? No one. Mm. There were no ones. So after he leaves, 
I think there's some players who will leave for sure. As Piliqueta is going to leave, you can mark my words. There's Rudiger who's going to be out of contract. Now with the owner, maybe they have a friendship with the owner. Or maybe they believe in the vision of the owner. Now that he leaves, who's going to be the head? Mm. And you see a fish rods from the head down. So in some way, I might be safe to say that clubs actually perform depending on the owners of the club. For sure, for sure, 100%. Look at Newcastle. Mm. That guy, Mike Ashley, who was there before these Saudi guys came in, completely abominable. And he was just awful. Mm. But now you see these guys have come in, they're investing in the club. They are keen on the club and they want the club to succeed. Now you see the changes are starting to happen. The environment is starting to change. The feeling, the mood, and the attitude towards the club, even from players. Kieran Tiani, he would not have moved to Newcastle if these guys would not have come in. Mm. You can, you'll see similar things happen in Chelsea unless a superb owner comes in. Yeah. Now, because you've talked about incredible things, including Tiani over there moving to Newcastle, mm. and we were talking about good owners attract <laughs> good results. <laughs> Are we talking about the Arsenal owners? <laughs> because <laughs> I might be well saying that they're the kind of people who yeah. made me even uh, forge in that step of moving away from that club all, because of the owner. I saw it's as if the owner... I still have a grudge with you. <laughs> the, the one thing, you're doing a great job here in Switch. The one bad <laughs> thing that really annoys me about you, how dare you move from Arsenal to Manchester United? It's United. called decisions. Ah, it's called decisions. Yeah, I, 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 I was uh, free to say that I was supporting a person who seemed to be well when he or she is being supported. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I'm the problem. I'm the problem right there. Yeah. But uh, we'll talk about that now. Arsenal versus Watford. Mm. I didn't see that coming. Ah, you should and, have. Uh, and I saw somewhere mm. that if it wasn't for Odegaard. <laughs> ah, that guy, man. I'm so impressed with Odegaard. He still needs to hit the gym. He's a little bit weak, yeah, huh? but technically he's superb. That goal of his was beautiful. One, two, Saka, and also the the our our our, our right back. I've forgotten his name. The Portuguese guy. Is it Soares? Cedric yeah, Soares, Suarez, yeah. Mm. So, I mean, it was a beautiful goal, in, a goal interchange with uh, Saka. I like how he's coming. I like how he's improved. And I like that he took the risk to move from Real Madrid to Arsenal. Mm. It's not always an easy thing, but he did that. Those goals were absolutely beautiful. Top-notch, top-class, wonderful goals. And what's the future for Arsenal? Because we're looking at Arsenal actually aiming for a top four finish. Is it going to happen? And if Arsenal is going to get the top four finish, do you think that the club is actually fit to compete in world league football like the UEFA Champions League? For sure. The future is bright for us Arsenal fans. God is with us again. I don't know who was seen him. Maybe it was you who needed to get out. <laughs> but we are good. I think that we are going to make the top four this season. For mm -hmm. sure. If we continue the way we okay, are... Okay, top four you're going to make yes. it. But... Okay, I don't know whether you're going to say it's a guarantee, but let's just say you've made it for the top four. Mm -hmm. Now, Arsenal, is Arsenal going to compete? <laughs> That's a Be in a question. competitive stage yes. at the UEFA Champions League? Uh, yeah, for sure. For sure. With the way our kids are progressing, Martinez, With Saka? Saka. Emil Suarez? Smithrow. Cedric, okay, we need to improve on that. <laughs> Don't mention that name on Pen Public. You should hide the thing in on a feature, Cedric. Uh, ah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, but I feel like we'll be able to compete. If we make one or two key signatures, mm. we'll be good. Especially backline and maybe uh, midfield somewhere there, we'll be good. I'll tell you, in three to four years' time, Arsenal, I've seen this, we're winning the league. Arsenal is winning the oh, league. for sure. But now the problem is that you've always seen that <laughs> <laughs> far from 2004. <laughs> now allow me to bring you in, in the big one now, the big matters that we are talking about. Manchester United versus Manchester City. At some point it appeared to be a contest and at the other side it appeared to be a one-man contest. Now what is wrong with Manchester United? I'm telling you, I was watching that game. I, 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 I... <laughs> I'm telling you. What I it. remember I, I saw a certain meme yeah. and what it was stating is to fungwe katu mesumama kwani zisi ni wanawake. Yani the cousin between Man City and United that second half they were blown by mm. they were open Man you couldn't even get the ball. Mm. Yani forget even they couldn't even touch the ball. I've never seen United look so hopeless than yesterday and Limbaya, it was tough. 
You know, it was really tough. There's this musician from um, from the US, Mick Mills, who said, <laughs> "We don't wear the same clothes. We don't eat the same food because there's levels to this." <laughs> so, so Jana, has just so it was on another different level. <laughs> but uh, Ragnik, uh, has he got the control over the squad? Because most of the guys say that Christian Ronaldo is the problem. Because when he came to Manu, uh, that Manu was trying to actually fit in a position that fits Roro. Now Cristiano was not there yesterday. Mm. What is the problem? I just think. One, there's a lot of players who are demotivated because, I mean, Ronaldo coming, I think Ronaldo is a great player. We all know he's one of the greatest of all time. But mm. I just don't think it was a perfect fit for Manu. I saw the first game Manu played against Leeds. You guys would have been superb if you just kept at it like that. Runners, pressing, everything was perfect. You blew past Leeds. When Ronaldo comes, now you see you have to cater to him. He's a superstar. Mm. You have to give him the ball. He's a super. He'll score goals, yes. But at what cost? He's, not, he's never defended. He's, he doesn't defend. And I see that's a problem. Greenwood would have... Me, Greenwood was supposed to be the number nine. That guy had so much potential. <laughs> now, of course, Vitu Zili and Akubaya, but... <laughs> I think, yeah, I mean, you have to... I think either you get rid of Ronaldo or find a way to play with him. Uh. Yeah. It means maybe put someone extra who can defend. I don't know what, what you guys can do. Okay, then. I'll, I think I'll just have to end it at that point where Mika himself says that we'll just have to find a way of doing away with Ronaldo, or rather accommodating him in that particular squad. Monday Night Sports, uh, we're actually coming to the end of this wonderful airing. You've been part of us from the start. Now we're coming to the final stretch uh, and, of course, uh, crossing the finish line. Remember, Monday, next Monday, we're going to be with you, same place, same time, here tonight. And we'll be talking about different milestones. Of course, we'll be putting a keen eye on Manchester United, just as he states. And I know he will be here next week to defend <laughs> his sentiments because I know that Manu is going to go back to the drawing board bigger and better. It has been a great pleasure having you from the start. And now it's time we have to switch off the lights and tell you that uh, we meet next time same place same time my name is Oranje Kusimba cheers and have a good night